Hey, tired of your Monday 9 to 5? Reliving the same crap every day for years on end. Wouldn't it be great if there were treasures the kinds your little blue-collar brain couldn't even comprehend exist, all very conveniently put in one place for you to take? Well, today's your lucky day, because there are plenty of them. You deserve to pick up your compass, boots, and the spirit of adventure and go find it. So let me tell you about, I don't know, like five of them. First, we got the Amber Room, constructed in the Catherine Palace in the 18th century in Tsarskov Selo near St. Petersburg. The room contained gold-glided mosaics, mirrors for some reason, and carvings, along with panels constructed out of about 1,000 pounds of amber and other expensive stuff. The Amber Room was looted during World War II by the army group of north of Nazi Germany and taken to Königsberg, a Prussian city that is now known as Kaliningrad, Russia, for reconstruction and display. Königsberg was destroyed by Allied bombers in August 1944 and documentation of the room location ends there. Personally, I don't really get how you can lose a whole ass room like that, but we did somehow manage to lose the F-36 fighter jet worth almost $100 million, so I guess I can't complain. Next, we have the Alaric's treasure. Alaric was a king of the Visigoths, a western tribe of the Goths, Germanic people. On August 24, year 410, Alaric decided to raid Rome. He and his Goth buddies stormed the city and took whatever they could find, including a bunch of gold, jewels, and some nice clothes. But Alaric's joy was short-lived. He soon got sick and died. The size of the treasure he looted is debated, but you can imagine how big it was because bozos decide to divert the whole ass river, dig a grave in its bed, bury Alaric with his stuff, and then let the water flow back. Now, as far as I know, there are two leading theories on why his burial location isn't known. It's either that they intentionally went to extreme lengths to prevent anyone from knowing the location by killing the slaves who did the burying, or they simply just forgot themselves, so no one knows where Alaric's treasure is to date. It could be anywhere in Cosenza, Italy, the mother name of Cosentia Brutum. Say, have you ever wanted to be the rightful emperor of China? Well, there is this Harlem Seal of Realm, and my awful, awful illustration of it. So in simple terms, it's like a very important stamp that was made when China first became one country under Emperor Qin Shi Huang. Oh, you think that's racist, huh? Doing the accents, huh? Well, maybe. But he wasn't the nicest guy himself. He burned a bunch of books and killed a lot of intellectual people. Also, people don't seem to have a problem with doing a German accent when paired being Hitler, but when it's a Chinese guy, it's suddenly very different. If anything, you're the racist. Was that? Normal people don't parody Hitler? This stamp was made from a special piece of jade, which is an expensive mineral that's really hard and shiny, usually green. The seal was used by the emperors of China for over 1,000 years. Having this seal was like having a ticket from heaven saying that you're the rightful emperor. It had words on it saying, having received the mandate from heaven, may the emperor lead a long and prosperous life. But around 907-960 AD, this special seal was lost and nobody knows where it is now. So if you find it, you could theoretically claim to be the rightful ruler of China. And I'm sure Xi would respect the rule of tradition and kindly pass you his position. After all, one might not respect human rights, but one must respect tradition. Next, there's a bell. I know it's already exciting, but what if I told you that it's not just a bell, but the Great Bell of Damazedi? The Great Bell of Damazedi is a legendary bell that was cast on February 5th, 1484 by the order of King Damazedi of Handhavadi Pegu. It was presented to the Svedagon Pagoda of Dagon, now known as Yangon Myanmar. The bell is believed to be the largest bell ever cast. The bell was reportedly made from 294 tons of metal, which included silver and gold, as well as copper and tin. It was said to be 12 cubits high and 8 cubits wide. One cubit is about 0.45 meters, so the height of the bell in meters would be approximately 5 and a half. In 1608, Filippe de Brito in Nicote, a Portuguese warlord, removed the Damazedi bell from the Svedagon Pagoda and rolled it down Singutara Hill to a raft on the Pazundaug Creek toward the Bago River. The bell and the raft were tied to the Brito's flagship for the journey across the River of Syriam to be melted down and made into cannon. Why turn an extremely precious ginormous bell into a cannon? Well, obviously, so you could shock your opponents with your belt. However, the load proved too heavy. The raft broke and the bell sank to the bottom, taking the Brito's ship with it. We just lost potentially the greatest treasure of our lifetime to the river. Let that sink in. In the early 1500s, a Spanish conquistador named Hernán Cortés led an expedition into the heart of Mexico. 
his goal was to find new riches and make a name for himself. He landed next to the city of Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital. The Spanish got a little greedy and decided to plunder some gold. However, after an incident in May 1520, the Aztecs began to revolt. The Spanish took the city's ruler Montezuma as their hostage and tried to convince the Aztecs to let them live peacefully. But things didn't go as planned. Montezuma died under unclear circumstances, and the Spanish found themselves trapped in the heart of Tenochtitlan. On July 1st, 1520, they saw a chance to escape. They managed to slip out the city along with their plundered gold. This escape attempt led to a battle known as La Noche Triste. The sad night. Why was it sad? Because in their mad scramble to escape, many of the Spanish drowned in Lake Texcoco, weighed down by their greed. The gold they had taken sank with them. It is said that as Cortés saw his months of gold-rich conquest crashing down in a single night, tears filled his eyes. And lastly, we have the most precious treasure that's been lost very recently under unclear circumstances. It is said that if you'll find it, you'll gain the power to ignite a special kind of joy not only in your heart, but the ones around you too. And it's of course your smile. Also, I'd very appreciate it if you suggested me some interesting topics in the comments, because as you can tell by how long it took me for to birth this video, I'm quite desperate. And of course like.